I would come back to the office late, later in the day, and I would uh, write up my notes uh, and my interviews and what have you and give them all to him. And he would put together what I had and what he had and uh, would make the column for the next day. And I mean, when he went away on leave or on vacation, I would write the column totally on my own. And the fact that I was writing the columns on my own under my byline attracted the attention of Variety. And uh, when they were replacing Sheila Graham, uh, they asked me if I would like to write the column at Variety under my byline, of course. And I, of course, said I would. They said, well, we'd like you to be a reviewer as well, a reviewer and a columnist. And I said, well, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think that I can really do both jobs well. I don't think that I could be a reviewer and be an honest reviewer and really pan somebody or give them a review which would be honest and not complimentary and then try to come around to them and get some information and news and uh, to write an interesting column because I don't think I would have any entree. So I said, I'll take one job or the other. Do you want me to be a critic or do you want me to write the column? And they said, no, we want you to write the column because they were replacing Sheila Graham. But I have been called, I had been called in uh, on occasion to do reviews when they were shorthanded, uh, uh, understaffed uh, because of vacation or because a lot of openings were happening. And they knew my background in covering nightclubs as well as movies. So I would do an occasional review, but uh, only under <laughs> duress. Uh, so I w became a columnist on April 27th, 1953. Was the first, my first column appeared uh, under my byline with the starting off that column and every, almost every column since then with the good morning salutation.